Welcome fellow chemists to the third mass spectrometry video where we will look at fragmentation and functional groups. We'll start with the halides and so here are spectra of different two halobutanes. In the previous video we focused heavily on molecular ion peaks but notice these spectra don't have any. What we can see is two different spectra so something must occur when one molecule fragments that does not occur within the other. The top spectrum was generated by two bromobutane. The largest peak, also known as the base peak, is pretty easy to explain. When the molecule is ionized, the bromine loses an electron. The molecular ion breaks at the carbon-bromine bond, resulting in a bromine atom which goes undetected, and a carbocation fragment which does. The fragment has a mass of 57, which corresponds to the tallest peak we see. This fragment is not only the base peak for 2-bromobutane, but there are no fragments of higher mass. Now contrast this with 2-chlorobutane. It also has a base peak at 57, which suggests to us it produces the same exact fragment, but despite having the same structure, it also produces fragments around mass 63. It turns out that the carbon-chlorine bond is stronger, so the molecular ion loses the chlorine less easily. That difference in strength allows something known as alpha cleavage to occur in the chlorobutane. That sounds fancy, but all that happens is a carbon-carbon bond next to the functional group is going to break homolytically. When it does, it forms a radical, which we no longer care about, as well as a chlorocarbocation, which is fairly stable as it exhibits resonance. In other words, the charge on the cation is shared between two atoms, chlorine on top and carbon on the bottom, which increases the stability. The mass of this chlorocarbocation is 63, but notice how the peak at MZ65 is about one-third the height. Can you think of an explanation as to why this is? If not, I suggest watching the previous video again. The next functional group we will look at is the ethers, and we will see some similarities to the halides. The molecule that produced this spectrum, again with no obvious molecular ion peak, is 2-methoxybutane. First, ionization occurs in the oxygen because, like the halides, it has lone electrons. The bonds to the oxygen are now weakened, which means fragmentation should occur on either of them. When it does, since oxygen is more electronegative, it takes the electrons and is not part of the fragment detected. If the bond to the methyl breaks, the detected fragment has mass 15, and we barely see a peak located there on the spectrum. Should the bond to the parent chain break, the fragment has mass 57 instead. While this peak is slightly bigger, the fact it and the peak at 15 are so small indicates neither is very likely to occur. What we actually have is a situation similar to chlorine where alpha cleavage produces a more stable cation. Cleavage to the bond on the left of the alpha carbon produces a primary radical. It would have produced a less stable methyl had I chosen the right. Not only does this process produce a more stable radical, this cation is also more stable because the charge is shared between the carbon and oxygen atoms. The cation has a mass of 59, which corresponds to the base peak of the spectrum. Keep in mind that this is a fragmentation pattern, so for 2-ethoxybutane, if alpha cleavage occurred, what are the fragments and where would the peak be? Hopefully you remembered resonance and drew both structures. For mass, it doesn't matter, as both structures have mass 73. The third on our list today is the alcohol. These molecules fragment really easily, and like we have with heptan 2 all here, the molecular ion peaks are extremely small if non-existent. There are a lot of peaks in the real spectrum, but these three are worth focusing on. When the molecule undergoes alpha cleavage, there are two possibilities. There were two possibilities with the previous examples, but I only showed one for simplicity. If alpha cleavage occurs on the left, there is production of this fragment where the charges share between carbon and oxygen like we've seen. It has mass 45. If the cleavage occurs on the right instead, the fragment is of mass 101. The peak at 45 is obviously the base peak, but why is it so much higher than the other produced by the same process? Well, a closer look at the outcome shows the first makes the mass 45 fragment and a primary radical. The second makes the mass 101 fragment and a methyl radical. Remember that the more stable the radical or cation, the more likely they are to form, so this is what favors the production of the mass 45 fragment. If what you've seen so far has you begging for something easier, well, you're in luck. When an alcohol fragments after ionizing, one thing it does produce is a water molecule. It's kind of strange where the extra hydrogen comes from, and it's why I altered the structure a bit. It does not come from the alpha carbon, which bonds directly to the alcohol group. It does not come from the beta carbon, which is next door. Instead, it comes from the gamma carbon. Who knew alpha, beta, and gamma would be useful outside of nuclear radiation types? Anyway, after this fragmentation, the water molecule has no charge, so it is not detected. Meanwhile, this fragment has a mass of 98, and it is detected. Heptan 2 all has a mass of 116, and if we subtract the mass of water, we get 98. This can be used in a general sense that for any alcohol, 
there should be a peak at M minus 18 due to the loss of water. We move next to the ketones, which, unlike the previous three examples, often have an easily identifiable molecular ion peak. Now let's look at the other three peaks on here. Two of them arise once again from alpha cleavage, where the shared charge ends up on the fragment with the oxygen. If the bond on the left breaks, we get a primary radical, and then the cation fragment with mass 43. It is produced so often it is the base peak on the spectrum. If the other bond broke, a cation fragment of mass 99 is produced. With the other being a methyl radical, this fragmentation does not happen nearly as much. The way this video is going, alpha cleavage is pretty standard, but as evidenced by what we just saw, it does not explain what is going on to produce a peak at 58. Like the loss of water from an alcohol, ketones, if the structure is right, undergo a special type of fragmentation. In this instance, it is because the alkyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon contains a gamma hydrogen. Where previously we considered the carbon with the functional group the alpha carbon, we actually start one position over. Once we get over this absurdity, we find the gamma carbon and thus the gamma hydrogen. This special fragmentation occurs after ionization and is called the McLafferty rearrangement. The end result is an alkene, in this instance butanoine, which does not get detected, and a cation fragment of mass 58. This has the property we've seen before where the charge is shared by more than one atom. McLafferty rearrangements can occur on other ketones but produce slightly different fragments. If the ketone was on position 3, can you determine the fragment and its mass? Our last functional group for this video is the amines, and we do not have to worry about alpha cleavage or McLafferty rearrangements. It's much easier, but it's so simple you may not spot it easily. Here are the molecular ion peaks of the previous three substances. The peaks are in the correct position, but the heights are just for show. Now here's the molecular ion peak for butan 2 amine. It's peculiar when compared to what we have seen so far. Do you see it? Here's a hint. And a few more. Now do you see it? Amines have odd molecular ion peak values. Now you might be thinking, surely you left off the halide because they are odd. To that I say yes, but no. What's really interesting is the haloalkanes have molar masses that round to the nearest odd number. But the mass spectrometer does not give us molar mass. Instead, it gives us the mass of the molecular ion. 2-chlorobutane has a molecular ion peak at 92 due to the chlorine-35 isotope and a smaller one at 94 due to the less common chlorine-37. With 2-bromobutane, the peaks are similar because the bromine-79 isotope, which causes the first peak, is about as abundant as the bromine-81 isotope, which is responsible for the second. After all this, we can conclude that an odd molecular ion peak can be caused by the presence of an amine group. We have seen the functional groups mentioned in this video before in nomenclature or reaction videos. In the final chapter of the mass spec series, we will be introduced to some new ones, amides, carboxylic acids, esters, and aromatics. Until we meet those new groups though, thank you very much for watching. Please leave any questions or requests in the comments below.